Welcome everyone to today's KBA. And what we're gonna be talking about today is the beginning of a topic that I've been excited to present to you guys as an audience around data management implementations. Now, I'm sure there's been plenty of KBAs, other videos out there relative to, you know, what is a data management solution? What can it do for you? We want to break that down for you so you can understand the different key elements that are involved with um, implementing some sort of data management solution. So in this series, we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about a number of different things. But first, before we get there, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Tom Fitzgerald. I've been doing a lot of these KVAs. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen me previously. If not, I'm a senior technical solutions executive here at Katif. Been with Katif for just about or just over two years, as a matter of fact. Previous to that, I was a solution architect. Uh, was so all a number of different kind of consultants at Autodesk for ten years. I've been working within the 3D design space for 25 plus years and supporting our manufacturing industry for well over 30 years, doing all sorts of different things. Um, I'm also a U.S. Army uh, veteran and a um, World War II historian. So in my free time, I like to read a lot of books, uh, watch a lot of documentaries and um, pursue the, uh, the, 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 the understanding of uh, history. So, all right. So. When it comes to the data management implementation series, we're going to be doing basically a five-part series. Um, each one of these uh, episodes will be a standalone KBA. However, they do have some sort of dependency upon one another. But at any point, you can just pop in and, and jump into uh, one of the uh, episodes and get some valuable information about the different things that we need to understand when it comes to implementing a data management solution. Okay, so this first one, we're going to be talking about planning. Um, what do we need to do specifically in order to plan our implementation, understand all the different information that's going to be necessary uh, that we need to collect and understand? So that way we get that holistic perspective of where our dependencies might lie and some of these other things. So we'll get into the agenda here momentarily. So a little bit about Katif, right? So who are we? Why are we even having this conversation? Um, and it's really because of the fact that Katif here as a technology company, we partner with a lot of different other companies that provide different technology solutions. When it comes to sales engineering, you know, we um, can focus on different uh, softwares and, and solutions that facilitate those sales individuals for receiving different quotes and design and, and CAD and working within engineering, working with a PDM, like what we're going to be talking about today, as well as 3D modelers and 2D documentation generators and things along those lines. Uh, when it comes to simulation and testing, once we have some of that information available, what are we going to do to validate those designs? How are we going to ensure that we have confidence in that design? And then ultimately from there, being able to push that information out to manufacturing. In this slide particularly, you will notice that there's this key thread that feeds its way through all of those, those different areas, and that is data management. At any one of these stages, we're either creating, consuming, or modifying information. What do we do with all of that data? Right, And having a good data management solution is the key to making all of that happen. And really the focus of all of this, if you look at this wagon wheel, the focus here is at the center of all is your IP, your intellectual property, that information that is making you successful as a business. So how does this all play into the grand scheme of that digital pipeline that we create? What, what, what I was mentioning in terms of estimating and receiving RFQs and building out reference information to drafting design and ultimately out, of man, out to manufacturing. These very distinct silos of where information is being produced and consumed and how that information feeds into that next silo. So that way we have that pipeline of information. You'll notice that Autodesk Vault is the one thing that really ties that all together. You know, if we have information that's being produced or, uh, or or being stored within an ERP system that we need to integrate to, to to ensure that we're not inputting information into multiple systems, 
having many different individuals interacting with that in, in, in that information to potentially create uh, uh, some sort of error in, in an instance where an error could occur. By having that system, that PDM, uh, like Autodesk Vault, uh, in play minimizes that risk, minif minimizes that opportunity for error. Okay. So today's episode, in today's episode, we want to focus on these things. These are, this is the agenda that we're going to be talking about in terms of where are you relative to your technology maturity? What are the benefits, goals, risks, and success factors that are associated to implementing a data management solution? What about ADCAR? I mean, ADCAR, I don't know if any one of you are familiar with this, but this is a methodology that I'm subscribed to in terms of helping people understand change. Um, we then want to understand what the current state of affairs might be and then uh, define what that ideal state is so that way we can build that roadmap in between. Okay, So that's today's agenda around planning our data management implementation. So technology maturity. Um, I love showing this slide simply because it allows us to, from a very uh, rudimentary perspective, understand where are we in, in terms of our technology journey. Um, we have four distinct levels and some key characteristics that identify you as a customer where you might reside within this mature, maturity matrix. Um, Level one, very disparate, very manual process, not a whole lot of systems involved. Level two, um, it's fragmented. You know, we are relying upon technology and systems, but they're really not communicating well with one another. Level three is when we start taking those different systems and tools and processes and start streamlining, connecting them, allowing them to communicate with one another. So we're once again, removing or reducing those opportunities for manual error. Level four, this is where we ultimately want to be, where we're really taking advantage of uh, emerging technologies to benefit you know, our business processes. Uh, we've gone a long ways in terms of training and upskilling and putting different systems in place and connecting those systems together. And once again, streamlining our processes so that way we can optimize the way that we operate. So understanding where you are within your technology maturity is important to understand what do you need to be focused on in order to get to that next level, right? If we're all trying to achieve level four, you know, where are we? Where are we starting from? And that's going to dictate what steps we have to take to get to that, that ultimate level, all right? So when it comes to implementing or planning your data management implementation, rather, the four things that we need to focus on are benefits, goals, uh, risks, and success, success factors. So when it comes to understanding the benefits, right, we want to challenge ourselves to understand, well, why do we need a PDM in the first place? Well, obviously, it's we want to streamline our different processes. If we have a lot of manual activity going on out there, uh, storing information, you know, on Windows Explorer, you know, we, it's not very streamlined in terms of how we're using that information, how we're storing and accessing that information. Another one of the benefits of a PDM are, is the opportunity for expansion, being able to grow and scale that solution. And ultimately, as we looked at at the technology maturity, to be able to go up to that next level and really get a, a lot of benefit out of our information. Um, which kind of lends itself to that third bullet point of improving the foundation for future technologies. It's very challenging. It's very hard to look at, you know, the emerging technologies that are out there. Uh, as an example, AI. I mean, how many of you have heard around uh, anything around AI recently? If you, how are you ever going to even understand how AI could benefit you if everything that you're doing currently is manual or you're not relying upon different systems? So you have to lay that foundation within technology, become versed and knowledgeable around what technology can do for you, implement it. So that way you're laying that, that step, that next rung in the ladder. So that way you can start taking advantage of newer technologies as they come up. Okay. So there's a lot of different benefits around implementing a data management solution. You also should focus on what are your goals? What should you be shooting for? Uh, once again, if you ask yourself the question of why are we doing this in the in the first place? Well, there's always pain points that are involved. You know, you can get you can 
talk amongst yourselves within the different business units and different departments within those business units to understand where information is breaking down, um, not having a connected system. So typically a lot of those goals revolve around reducing errors and rework. You know, a lot of the times they're very identified and very apparent where there's going to be um, problems within the process. Being able to access data faster. This is a huge one. I mean, those of you that aren't using a PDM right now, uh, ask yourself this, how long does it take for you to find the information you need? And then once you find it, how confident are you that it's accurate? You know, being able to rely upon a system to give you that level of confidence and that, that performance of being able to access the, access the information when you need it. And then of course, improve fidelity. Well, what does this mean? And why, why does, why, what does this have to do with a goal? Improve fidelity is understanding associativity, uh, dependencies, connections. Um, if you're think, if you think about a 3D CAD modeler like Inventor as an example, um, there's a lot of different associations that are created and relationships that are created between the information and the data. Uh, without having a, a, a PDM or a data management solution, it's going to be a lot more challenging to understand where those associations and relationships lie, which could then impact you from making a, a, a valuable decision. Uh, so having that, that, that improved fidelity and that vision as to what's actually going on with your data is going to allow you to make more informed and uh, decisions that are more likely to be successful as opposed to not being so successful. Okay. So when it comes to risks, um, these are a lot of the times I think companies are failing to understand what are they getting themselves into. Um, maybe they're kind of jumping in feet first. Maybe they see other companies that are doing something similar and they want to follow suit. No, really going through this planning and exercise of learning those goals and benefits and now risks. What are those impacts? What's, what is the impact of not doing something in terms of implementing a, a PDM? Um, um, some of the other risks in, in terms of uh, implementing a, a system like a, P, like a data management like PDM is what about educating my users? What about getting them in, uh, past that learning curve? What kind of impact is, is that going to have on production? Obviously, you have to take that into consideration and plan for it, so that way when those things do arrive, you have a contingency, okay? Um, another risk is typically there's going to be a technology expenditure. You're either going to have to buy hardware, you're definitely going to have to buy software, and then, of course, you have to, once again, put that, that training component in there and understand, well, what kind of cost is going to be involved there, so these are all risks that need to be highlighted in order for you to, once again, make that informed decision, okay? What are the, some of the success factors that we should be looking at? Well, um, once again, if we ask ourselves, where, why are we doing this in the first place? Why are we going through this exercise? Um, and you uh, start identifying where those pain points might be, where are those uh, uh, obvious problems and issues that you need to overcome. Well, then once you have that, it's going to be a lot easier to start defining your success factors. And this is really important. I mean, we got uh, of the other four things, I think this is one of the more important things because implementing a, a PDM or a data management solution, depending on a number of different factors, like the size of your company, uh, the amount of systems that you have to integrate with, um, the amount of data that you have, the complexity of your product lines, all these are variables in terms of what could potentially make you successful. And if you don't lay out those success factors, if you don't lay out how do we know that we've succeeded? How do we know that we're not just sitting here spinning our wheels? We're doing something, we're implementing, we're making, we're taking action, we're trying to uh, uh, improve a process. But if you haven't identified your success factors, you're never going to know where you are within that journey, right? So identify where your pain points at and start tying together some metrics in terms of your successes. You can also um, focus on collaboration improvements, right? So doing an internal analysis as you, to your current processes, start polling and questioning many different individuals as to where their problems might be in terms of their day-to-day -day activities. You can start aligning different metrics to those things 
to once again, identify those particular success factors. Uh, another thing to focus on is data synchronization. And what I mean by that is if you have a number of different places where data may exist, if we look back at, at the one of the previous slides in terms of estimation has information that they create, sales engineers. Uh, you have design and engineering that's creating information. And then, of course, you have manufacturing that's creating information or even consuming information mostly. They all have different requirements, even though they may be using and leveraging the same data. So ensuring that that data is synchronized so you don't have to input it multiple times is going to be very important in terms of being able to identify that success as well. Okay, so those four things are, are should be front in your mind and foremost in terms of what you want to do relative to planning out your data management implementation. Okay, another thing that we want to focus on, because the fact that up to this point, we've been really talking about technology and software and, and understanding success and goals. So it's all been business oriented. One thing that we do really want to pay attention to is our people, because without the people, really, what, what is it all about, right? We have tools, we have processes, but really it's the people component that is, it, it ha must have the priority. And if we think about this, if we think about implementing any kind of change within an organization. You're always going to have people that are super stoked about it and they, they, they can see the benefit of it and they, they, they want to go ahead with it. And then there's going to be other individuals that are really reluctant to changing. Maybe they're very comfortable, very familiar with the current process. And they're very resistant to change simply because they don't want to, you know, feel uncomfortable in that regard. ADCAR here, as I'm displaying on the screen, is a methodology to help people, you know, accept change and work with different change uh, within an organization. And it's it's an acronym and it breaks down to these five different things. So awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and then lastly, reinforcement. So we have two different zones that we focus in, in terms of enabling individuals to contend with the change. And then we have an engagement zone where now that that is all out there, we've we've understood that a change is necessary. We've provided all the, the support for, for our, our users. Now we want to engage with that change and actually make it happen, okay? So um, I love ADCAR and it's something definitely, you should definitely be thinking about when uh, planning out your data management implementation. So that way you're not just contending with the, the software and the technologies, but you're contending and, and, and supporting the individuals that are, you are absolutely required to make that change happen, okay? So going back to the agenda. So we've done some of our planning. We've identified some of the different things in terms of risk goals, success factors, uh, where we're, we've developed some sort of, or we're leaning on a methodology to help our people accept this change, making sure they're aware. The next thing that we want to do when we get into our implementation planning is capturing the current state. So I've listed a few things here that everybody should be focusing on and really mining some information about in order to capture the current state. And this is really rel relative to um, data management implementation. However, some of these things might lie or you might lean on when it comes to uh, implementing other systems within your organization as well, okay? So when it comes to data management, you definitely wanna understand what your folder structure is going to be. How are you going to lay out your folder hierarchy to store specific information, okay? Um, the current, your current uh, file organization structure or folder structure may be adequate, but it's definitely something that you wanna analyze. What's working, what's not working. The number of files that you're going to be, that you currently have um, is going to be important to understand um, because as we get into some of these other bullets, it's, it's, it's good to understand, well, how much information do we actually have to deal with? Um, what kind of duplicates might, might exist? Uh, is it 10% of all of my data might be a duplicate? Is it 20%? Is it 5%? Just being to be able to initially understand of all the data that you have, what might be duplicate information? 
Um, because at some point, we're going to have to deal with what that duplication means and what kind of impact that might mean as we get into some of these other additional uh, episodes. File associations, it's going to be very important to understand, well, how are files connected to one another? How are they dependent upon one another? And then, of course, uh, what does that look like? If half of your data is, say, CAD data that has file associations, well, you may want to um, um, develop a, um, a data loading strategy that is going to be considerably different than maybe a different company that has 90% of their information is static. Very little of it has dependency. So understanding where your file associations are relative to the amount of information you have is going to be important. Um, some of the key strengths of, of a lot of PDMs is to be able to display metadata or other characteristics and information around files aside from just their file types. And this really has to do with properties and property information. So understanding what information do you need to see within your files? And then of course, um, it does that span across all of your information? I mean, if you think about it, every single file has a file name. Every single file has an author, has file size. Some of that key information, that, that foundational information is always going to be there. But what information is, is necessary and specific to you as an organization that you need to see within those files? And another question you should be asking yourself is, does that need to apply to every single file type? And if so, if not, how is that, how is that broken up? These file types need this kind of information. These file types over here need different information. Being able to understand what that is, documenting that um, is going to be very, very important as we get into the later stages of the implementation. Um, systems dependencies. If I have an ERP system within my organization, do I want to synchronize that information with my data management uh, solution? Um, wh which way does it go? Is it a push? Is it a pull? Is it a push-pull? How is that separated out in terms of file types or um, my organization, my file organization? So understanding what that looks like is going to be critical as well. Obviously, we don't want it, um, our data management solution to be wide open like a sandbox or just a repository. We want to understand who has access to what and when and how should we allow them to be able to interact within that information by applying different permissions. So who, how, and that level of access in terms of rules and permissions. Got to document and identify that as well. Bullet eight here, points of access. And what I mean by that is, um, are you going to be working, or, or rather, are there going to be individuals that are just going to be accessing that information that are internal to the company? Are they going to be external to the company? Are they uh, on-premise workers? Are they remote workers? Um, are there going to be... Um, vendors that need to access that information. So understanding how, what are the different points of access to your system, to your information? And then of course, uh, relative to some of the other bullet points here, how does that, how does that play into the, the overall planning of our implementation? And then lastly is, how does our data flow? How does your data flow? And, and what I mean by that is, information that's coming into the system, information that has to go out of the system, and um, what kinds of life cycles need to be coordinated with that information. Um, is it static information that just needs to be put into, into the system, or is there a development and design process that we need to adhere to to ensure that we have uh, different checkpoints and gates uh, for the legitimacy and accuracy of that information? So, all these are very important when it comes to capturing the current state. So not worrying about the future so much is where are we at today? What does that look like? You should be looking at all nine of these bullet points here and start capturing that information to start building that picture of what the current state of affairs might be. Once we have that, once we have all that in place, then we can start identifying, well, what is the ideal state? We know where our benefits, what our benefits are. We know what our goals are. We know where the risks lie. We have identified our success factors and we have a good understanding of what the current state is. Once we have all that, 
Now we can say, okay, based upon this information, where do we want to be, okay? What's not working well with the current state? Obviously, if you're communicating with other uh, individuals within the organization, they're going to easily be able to tell you and identify where their struggles might be on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, how can our current state be improved in the future state? So what technologies are available? Um, how, what, uh, how, how can we make changes today um, within our current state that could have impacts for tomorrow? So being able to identify what's not working and then what changes can be applied to those things that aren't working that could benefit us. Because there's gonna be new technologies in place, different workflows, um, we also have to take into consideration the training element that's involved. How do we upskill our users so that way they can actually utilize that information or the, those tools and those changes appropriately? What changes to the workflow will be needed? <clears throat> um, if you think about your current state and your current workflows that are involved, if you introduce a new technology or a new system, obviously in, in most instances, um, there's gonna be a change needed to that workflow. Additional steps are gonna be included. Some steps may be removed. Other steps may just be manipulated or modified to accommodate um, that new tool or that new service that might be in place. And then of course, is our workflow documented and diagrammed? And I, I, I really think that more and more companies need to embrace workflow documentation. Um, in a lot of instances, uh, particularly individuals here at Katib, when we engage with you guys um, for any type of technology service that you might need, it's really helpful for us to be able to understand um, from, a, from a really quick perspective of what does your environment look like? How does your information flow? What are your different roles and responsibilities? Who has to interact with that information, right? So not only is it helpful for individual, individuals like ourselves, but it's very uh, valuable to you as a company to be able to you know, articulate and demonstrate and illustrate some of that information for those individuals that need that information readily, okay? So well-documented and diagrammed workflows can be extremely important, okay? So in summary, um, really when it comes to planning your data management implementation, when it comes to planning, you're gonna spend a lot of time up front building out that, that plan. And having a good plan can really make all the difference, right? Um, do your homework. Ask other, uh, other companies within your industry, how did they do it? Uh, ask other companies that are not in your industry, how did they do it? There could be some, some, some things to glean from those conversations as to how do they currently use their data management solution if they have one. Um, talk to your people. Poll individuals within your organization. Uh, come up with different uh, ways of, of producing surveys, if you will. Um, just have open, candid conversations with individuals, maybe at lunchtime or or whatever the case might be, and, and, and really get a true sense as to where are those pain points and maybe even some, some recommendations as to some, as to some solutions, some suggestions, okay? And you know, like I said in the last slide, don't be afraid to document. Digitally document. Use a tool, uh, an online tool, or, or maybe even not, but at least create some sort of digital, digital document that defines your workflow, has a diagram involved, has the different uh, stakeholders and the uh, persons of responsibility, how they have to interact with that information. These things can go a long way in terms of um, making change going forward, scaling, expanding, growing as necessary. And the last point I really want to make here and I don't, I don't know if it's, it's being done enough, is set reasonable expectations. You're going to hear a lot, of, uh, a lot of the time that something might be easy, or we've done it uh, so many different times, or this is the way that we've been doing it, or um, you know, whatever the case might be. Really focus on developing your plan, understanding those risks, benefit, goals, success factors, document it very well, once you have all that information laid out in front of you, it's going to be a lot easier to, for you to understand 
uh, how to set those expectations, uh, timeline expectations, resource allocation expectations, um, cost and uh, financial expectations. And then from there, you're really gonna be able to make a good decision as to how you want to proceed going forward. So with that said, we can open up for a Q&A um, and have a more of a live conversation as to anything discussed within this video. Thank you.